Hi, this is Bob Woodfin with Bob Woodfin Photography and the Rowlett, Texas Photography Club. I just wanted to go over with you the levels adjustment layer and the curves adjustment layer. We went through these in the last workshop and I just kind of introduced you to them at that time. And so now I want to really kind of dig a little deeper into what those are and give you an opportunity to, to work with those from this tutorial and uh, understand exactly what they're doing. So this image was shot in downtown Rockwall and uh, this is a laundry and the doors are, the, excuse me, the windows are open because that was a pretty warm day and it gets pretty warm in that laundry. Uh, this looked like, I think it was an industrial laundry that uh, uh, is cleaning clothes for uh, other people rather than a personal laundry where you can take it in yourself. But anyway, um, I shot this picture because I like the, the uh, uh, recurring windows here. But let's talk about levels right quick and show you what levels is designed to do. Um, if I open the levels adjustment layer here and we look at levels, and by the way, this, uh, this screen can be sized a little bit, so if you take it and push it in or pull it out. I like to make it a little bit bigger here so I can see what I'm working with. So let's just kind of zoom in here and take a look at what we're looking at. Um, what we have, and I didn't quite get it correct, so let me zoom out and back in again. Um, kind of acting up on me here, so. Um, Here we go. This isn't quite all of it. Here we go. So what we have here is the histogram, and this is the screen, and it's it, it's a little bit too too zoomed in. You can't see the bottom um, icons here, but we'll talk about those in just a second. But I just want to talk about what all of these things are that you see here. Um, <laughs> Now, this is uh, not quite working out as I hoped. Let me take it and uh, see if I can make it a little smaller before I zoom in so you can see what's going on. Can I zoom here? Here we go. Now let's zoom in here and get a better look. Okay, here we go. So what we have here, first we can look, well up here there are two different um, icons and right now we're going to concentrate on this icon and I'll show you the, um, this is the properties part of the Ike of the levels, all of these that we're going to look at has both a um, a regular panel and then the properties panel. But we're going to look at the panel, the levels panel right now. And what we have here is a preset drop down. If you look here, these drop downs come with the product. Uh, you can create your own. All you have to do is make the changes you want. Click on custom, and then you get to name it whatever you want to name it. And then next time you come in, you can use those settings. Uh, I have never created my own custom because to me every image is unique and I don't plan on um, using the same setup or the same settings from, from one uh, image to the next. So I don't use this but if there, I'm not saying there's not a use for it. If it works for you, fantastic. Uh, so just, just know that they're here and that you can create your own. This right here is your channels click on channels. We, uh, we are going to work with the RGB channel. We're not going to work with the red, green, and blue channel, although you could if you wanted to come in and make just adjustments on just a particular color channel. You can do that. that I think that's a little bit more advanced and we're going to back off of that right now since this is a beginning Photoshop workshop. So we're only going to be working with the RGB channel in this case. This is the auto button. If you wanted to automatically try to, find, to come up with your uh, your settings that you should have on this particular image, then you can just click auto and it will try to come up with an auto setting for you. A lot of times that's a good place to start. I don't really ever use that, but you could and, you know, um, try it. If it makes a big difference and you like it, then you're good to go. Um, I tend to, tr to want to do the things myself. Um, these droppers uh, what you can do is click on this dropper and it will select your black point for you. 
uh, you click on it actually and go into your image and look for the darkest part of your image and click on it and that will become your black point. This is your midtones and this is your white point. If you click on that and go to the lightest part of your image, it will select your white point for you. Um, those are useful. I, I use them occasionally. Typically, I set my own white and black point, but um, it's it's your call on that. What you want to do. This is the histogram itself of your image. You can see that most of the histogram is to the left of center, which means that it's a darker image. Um, you have very few pixels over here and on the right side you have a uh, few pixels on your left missing just a few right before uh, pure black and uh, we'll talk about how these sliders will work in just a moment but you, this indicates this 255 indicates where this slider is stationed right now this 1.0 indicates where the midpoint is right now and zero is your black point this indicates where the black point slider is at the current time this, this uh, down here at the bottom, this, if you, it doesn't really show on this histogram, but in this case, the sliders here are on an X axis. You actually have a Y axis that goes up and down as well. These pixels up here are not as, as uh, bright, or excuse me, not as dark as these pixels down here on the same area. So if you have a pixel that is at one here, it's uh, going to be at zero on the Y scale. If it's up here, it's going to be a little bit higher on the Y scale, which means it's going to be a little bit darker than what your pixels down here are. So you actually have a Y scale here, and that's what this does. If I take this and move it to the left, it's going to be bringing you from the top down toward the bottom of where your, your, um, uh, your black and white points are. So if I take this, wherever your white point is, and I move it to this, it's going to be reducing your white point from the top of the y-axis down. The y-axis goes from 0 here up to 255 here. So at 255 up here, if I bring it down to 218, your ax on your x-axis of 255, you're going to be down here at 218, so it's going to be darker than it would be at 255 on your y-axis and 255 on your x-axis. I'm not sure that makes a lot of sense to you, but when we get over to the curves, curves shows this very, very well. Um, the opposite here is, of course, going on your dark, uh, starting with your black and your bottom of your y-axis. If I move it this way, you can see that it goes from zero going up the y-axis. Now it's at 53. So anything that is on your black point here as it goes up is going to become lighter. And like I said, we'll see that much easier when we get over to looking at curves. I almost, almost never use this. If I'm going to do it, I'll probably do it on the curves. It's just easier for me to know what's going on. So with that in mind, okay, here we have at the bottom these icons. And these icons are consistent on almost all of your adjustment layers. Um, the presets, um, these are sometimes a little different. But your presets and your icons at the bottom are almost consistently on all of your adjustment layers. So what are they? This right here is your throw it away. You don't like it, trash it, and you get to start over, which is much the same as right here where you do reset. So if I were to make a change, move this over here, and if I trashed it, it's going to trash the entire layer. If I do, this shows me that it's turned on. If I click it, the layer is actually turned off. If I turn it back on, the layer becomes active again. This is a, a preview button. If I click this, it goes back to the way it was. Let go. Oh, excuse me, click it. Oh, it resets. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of this button. So that resets it. So if I take it here, push that, it resets it so I can start over again. If I push this over here like this and click, the, click and hold this, I get to see a before and let go and I get to see an after. So it's a before and after type button. And this right here is a clipping. And what a clipping mask does is it says, I want this to apply only to the layer below and not the entire image. We'll talk about clipping masks in detail down the road. So with all of that, what does, what does levels actually do? Um, we're taught as photographers to try not to push the histogram too far to the right or too far to the left. 
In other words, our exposure, we don't want to clip our highlights or block up our shadows. So if our histogram is in between these two points, then we say, okay, we're good. We've got a good histogram. But at the same time, what this is telling me is that we have the whitest white in our image is right here. So if I come over here and look, the whitest white in my image is actually at 168, which is telling me that we have a very narrow image. If I push this over here, you can see now that the midtones are almost right in the middle of the histogram, and we almost have a perfect histogram when we do this. The same with the black point. If I push the black point over here to right about the, t the end of where the histogram is, it's now at 5. So what I'm telling this is that anything from 168 to 255 is going to be pure white. Anything from 5 to 0 is going to be pure black. And what that does is it flattens out your histogram so that you have more dynamic range in your image. And when I say dynamic range, what I mean is more, uh, uh, more brights and blacks and more midtones in your image. Otherwise, it's going to be most of everything, if I don't touch any of this, almost everything is going to be left of the mid midpoint, so your image is going to tend to be darker. So if I take this and I zoom out and I look at my image now, look at the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. So basically just by moving those sliders to where the points are, you're setting up your image to have a better dynamic range. So that's the entire issue or the entire point of using levels. Now a lot of times um, you, well most of the time whenever you're working with raw images you probably should do this in your raw editor. So if you go to, if you go, let me close this and show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to create a, a copy here we're going to rasterize and we're going to put these in a group so that I can do a before and after. So there's a before and after. If I go back to Camera Raw, I can do the same thing over here just by pushing this out over here and pushing this out over here. And you have, I have these warnings up here that tell me whenever I'm clipping my highlights. So I could push this way over here push this way over here even with my exposure and try to get my image that's try to spread it out a little bit better so you can do this and you'll notice that my whites and blacks are affected so are my shadows and highlights because I, I grab if you look up here this is the same way in Lightroom if you look up here it tells you I'm in the whites I'm in the highlights I'm in exposure shadows and blacks so it's telling you which slider you're moving. And I like to do it directly on the histogram because that's a, actually what I'm trying to do is move the histogram. See, it's a warning there. If I take the, the whites, move them, move them up like that. I can take it all the way over to right in there. But I don't like to do that. It's a little too bright, so I would want to do a little bit with highlights. So I think, personally, that you really should do it over in your raw editor and we'll take this back to, to Lightroom, or excuse me, to Photoshop. And this is this is a straight out of uh, Camera Raw, and this is with your uh, white point, black points being set in the levels adjustment layer. So not much difference. If you look here real close, a little bit brighter over in the Raw Editor, and that's just uh, you know just because I, I, I changed them, you know, I, I can't duplicate it exactly over there. So what I'm suggesting to you with the black point uh, and white point sets, I would set them in the raw editor. The only time I really use levels when uh, I'm in Photoshop is if I'm doing a lot of work on an image here and I'm placing a lot of effects on it and it tends to make it either darker or brighter. And then I may want to go in and reset the exposure and I use I will use levels or curves to do that. So let's let's just take another image and let me show you um, some of the difference. So if I take this and I do another levels 
and so you can see I'm already pushed up against black so I'm not going to reset the black point so I'm going to take this and push it over here to here and sometimes you may want to push the midpoints I didn't talk about that earlier but sometimes the midpoints are just a little bit too you know the, the mid tones is what I should say are a little bit too dark so you may want to push those over a little bit too so I'm doing that and notice how that brightens up this area so just by doing that I've gone from from this to this and again I would do that over in in uh, your raw editor first here's another one well I guess I closed that image instead of <laughs> going to it here's another one that we can uh, do levels and again now question may be what if you have a bump over here and then you have all this stuff over here I would go past that little bump to where the edge is because that is an anomaly and what you can do with that that's going to be pure white now and what you would want to do is go in you could either clone that out or you could crop it out or you could just accept it as being pure white so now we have an image that went from here to here just by setting your white point okay let's do one more now these have some white balance issues so I'm going to open this up over in Photoshop and I'm just going to bring the yellows down until I get something something that looks pretty good like right there and notice how this image is way to the left because it's dark this is in a church in um, uh, Santa Fe uh, what I would normally do is take this and spread it out over here to make it look right but what I'm going to do is just set the white and black point over here just to kind of show you right off the bat how we can make a huge change in this image so here we have all I did was move the slider over and we've got a really nice image here so that's all there is to setting your white and black point there is of course more advanced stuff you can do I didn't use these here at all if I wanted to do that let's just reset and I say I want this is um, this is the black point so I'm going to go to the blackest thing in the image like right here it's pretty black and then I'm going to go to the whitest thing in the image which is probably right in here this flame and it didn't move anything there we go I guess I can't I can't do pure white but I can do fairly white so just by doing that it has made a huge adjustment on here uh, and then I can go to midpoints if I have something that's uh, kind of a good midtone that I can set and it gives me that so using the the eyedroppers you can also do pretty well to set your uh, your black and, and white points so I'm not going to go into working with these um, we'll, we'll talk about working with the output and input levels when we get over to curves uh, we're not going to talk about auto we won't talk about the other channels but this is this in this simplicity this is how you would set your white and black points over in Photoshop okay and, and again this is a adjustment layer so being adjustment layer means that you could come back in here and adjust it at any time and make changes okay so that being said let's go uh, here's another one um, that we're going to go over and fix the white balance on it. Bring this down here until we get something pretty nice. It's a little too blue right in there. Okay. So we'll say okay. Now I want to introduce you to curves. Curves is curves can do everything that levels can do except uh, everything that levels can do. It can also do a lot more. So a lot of people live and die by curves and here is the curves the curves um, adjustment layer so let's take a close look at that uh, and my zoom is just not working today let's see if we can try this again <laughs> wow okay well we won't zoom you can see it probably here Again, we have the properties uh, panel we're not going to talk about today. 
but you also here is the curves um, that brings up the curves panel again you have the default or the uh, presets here if you wanted to you can create your own presets um, RGB channels red green blue we're going to just talk about RGB today and then on the left hand side you have all of these things so you have some you have the same thing you had in levels but you have more and one of the things that's really nice over here is that you have a a uh, select a pointed selection tool so you can click on that and if you wanted to lighten something up let's say you want to lighten this brick up a little bit you just click and drag up and it will lighten that up and then down here you can click this and lighten it up come over here and click this and lighten it up a little bit <coughs> pardon me and you'll see over here on the curve it's put the points on the curve for everywhere you click so it's actually pushing things up now you remember a while ago when I told you in levels let's pull this down here so you can see this in levels I said there was a y-axis here you can see the y-axis see this where it's black down here and it lightens up it gets goes to pure white so this is pure white this is pure black the same as it is on the x-axis where you have pure black and pure white so as I take this point and move it straight up it's the same pixels from the x-axis but it's making them brighter on the y-axis <clears throat> so that's all I was talking about earlier and that's what this input output means I am currently you can see these still have a little circle thrown this is filled in so this is the active point this active point went from 21 which was down here up to 44 which is up here so that's what this means if I take this point this point began on 51 it's now on 80 as I move it up you'll see 82 85 you'll see it move up still at 51 if I move it right or left the 51 changes to 56 46 so that's all that means and that's all it means on the other uh, in levels if except that you move these because you don't have the ability to do points on a curve so I said that this does everything that levels does notice you have a slider down here move this slider over notice this up here is moving because this curve is within your your points so if I move this to the left can move it way over here notice these points stay the same so my white point is going to be about right here so now because I kept have these points in here this doesn't brighten up so much if I take these and all you have to do is grab and drag throw it away notice how now I can affect the white the brightness of it more um, by using this see it becomes really bright as I come in because it's allowing me to move all of these pixels further to the left and making them move up so anything to the right of this pixel or excuse me of this slider again is pure white so it becomes a white point here black point here and then I can come in within the white and black point once again with this and maybe brighten this up a little bit and that's a point down there and it, notice that it moves everything on the curve because it's a gradual thing when you move something on here it's going to move all of the pixels related to it unless you tell it not to specifically so maybe you want to maybe you want to brighten up the face a little bit you can do this it's going to brighten that up but it's going to brighten everything else notice where the the active uh, point is right there so that's the way this works and this is very similar to your point curve over in Lightroom or Camera Raw so let's take another image and look at that so if we take this and go over to Camera Raw we can go over to this point curve and we have the same thing here we just don't have the ability well I guess you can if you change it to parametric if you have parametric you can change this excuse me see how it's moving the highlights up here I change the highlights see how it goes up and goes down and highlights 
and then down here the lights it's taking the entire lights there and then darks brighten up the dark so see how it's affecting that image if you want to go to point you don't have the ability to, to do the the point curve but you can do it up here push those over and then take the points here and push up the lights bring down the darks a little bit until you get a nice contrast on this and then I would go back over here and I would take this and push it over this is now and warning area so push that over. I'll try to push this over toward the middle to try to get more of my histogram toward the middle so that you get um, a midpoint or a, a very nice contrast in this. So if you look at this is the before, this is the after. Much sharper. Still some work you know that I would do on it but much sharper there. Now if I take this and uh, reset and go back over here and then do the same thing over here with curves what I would do here is I would push this over to the edge and maybe even a little bit further because those there's just so few there to to really brighten it up a little bit and then bring this over to the edge of the darks and you're already introducing something really nice here so then I may, may take this and kind of you know, lighten it up a little bit in the midtones. A little bit contrasty there. Um, and maybe even lighten it up a little bit right there. And you get something like that as opposed to that. So this is the way I would use curves. I would first set the black and white points and then I would look for how to adjust specific areas. And just doing the white and black points, it gets you almost there in this image. Let's try another one. We have another one of this young lady. These were shot at um, Rainbow Vomit exhibition uh, a few months ago. These two young ladies, mermaids, are some uh, really sweet ladies, and they, they love to do this kind of stuff. And If you get a chance to shoot them, you should take the chance. Um, they do a lot of things for kids and that sort of thing so it's, it's really nice a lot of benefits and so on so if we take curves again set the white and black points something like this and she's a little bit dark so I'm going to want to brighten her skin tones up a little bit take that and this is shot with a on camera flash which I hardly ever do but this is such a dark venue shot with uh, high ISOs as well. So again, before, after, very easy to do. Just move this over to that and then make your little change. But again, I probably would not do this. I would do it over here in... Oh, I need to charge my keyboard battery. Okay. I would probably come over here and spread out my histogram. I'm not even looking at her. I'm just trying to get my histogram kind of centered here. And then I would go over to the point curve and maybe raise it. The thing about doing it over here at the point curve, you don't have these selected points that you have on the curves over in Photoshop. So that's not bad. Uh, she's still a little bit dark there, and I would probably try to lighten her up a little bit. So, um, let's see. Does this show? No, it doesn't. Okay, what I was thinking is if you're over in, in Photoshop and you're on the curve, you can move your cursor around, and it will tell you where on the curve that point is. And then you can just go in and lift that. So I'm not really sure where her skin tones, what what the RGB values and where on this curve or skin tones are. If I knew exactly, I could just come over here with the curve and push it up or down. But I don't know that for sure. So now I'm just going to cancel and go back over here and again turn this on and we have a really nice image. So that is pretty much it on curves and, um, and levels. 
Uh, here's another one. We'll just uh, look at it right quick. We'll look at curves. And I haven't talked about these, but these work exactly the same way that they do over in, in uh, on levels. Is that this is my black point. If I wanted to look at something, let's bring it down here. It's probably down here on her her costume there is a black point. So I would select that area right there as the black point. And then I would come in here at the white point. It's obviously going to be up here in the cloud somewhere. So we have that. And then probably a mid-tone, if I can find a mid-tone, and I don't really know that there's a good mid-tone, maybe kind of up here in this cloud. And it, that kind of gives me that. And notice what it does when I use these. It's actually doing it by color channel. And this is what it looks like when you have it by color channel, is that it goes in and looks at the different colors. If I look at the green, the red channel, it has moved the red channel over here and put a point on it and moved it up a little bit based on what I have selected. Um, again, I think that's a little advanced. I wouldn't worry about that too much. But this is this is how you would use these. Now it's still a bit dark for me, so I would probably reset and just come back in here and do like I was doing before and just kind of manually maybe right here just a little bit up right there and maybe maybe bring the whites down just a little bit give her a little bit of contrast and you have something like like this as a before and after so what have I not to oh these things right here are advanced features and we're not going to talk about those at all um, you, these are, you can draw your own curve in here however you want it and mark it up and that sort of thing. So we're not going to talk about that because that's a little bit much. We also have menus in here where you can go in and if you want to see um, show clipping for black and white points, it will show you whenever you go to move this, it turns to black and it shows you where your white comes in, just like you're taught to use your um, your alt key or your option key whenever you're in Lightroom or, or uh, Camera Raw. So you can push this and you see just as this is just, so down here at the bottom you can, you can see right as you're clipping your blacks you can see that and I usually can take it there and then push it back just a little bit. So right here take it and push it back just a little bit so you're right on the edge right there and you see that this is before and after. It's not showing me before and after. Okay, we'll do it this way. Before, after. So a little, not a whole lot, except it gets rid of that little bit of a haze that, that you see there. Okay, so that's really all I wanted to go over with on uh, black point, white point with levels and then with curves, how you can set the black and white points and um, much more. And again, what I would probably do is do as much as I can over in Lightroom or in Camera Raw using the uh, using the histogram and pushing the whites and blacks and the highlights and, and shadows to get the histogram looking pretty good. Now one thing I didn't mention is that if you have an image such as a high key image or a low key image where everything really needs to be pushed to the left or pushed to the right then um, this really doesn't apply as much. What you would probably do there is try to disregard the, the, the pixels that are pushed too far to the right or pushed too far to the left and just worry about your, your particular uh, subject in the image. Uh, for example, if you were shooting a landscape that's uh, a snowscape, um, you probably are going to have some blown whites in there uh, and you probably will not have a white point that you need to adjust too much but you may have a black point that you need to adjust that will bring back the contrast of whatever your subject is so just keep that in mind that if you if you push if your pixels are to one side that doesn't make necessarily mean that they're wrong um, sometimes that's the way the image is supposed to be so that is it Thank you for, for joining me. I hope you got something out of this.